I'm thankful to see another day. No, things aren't what I want them to be. No, I don't have all the things I want to have. But I'm thankful that I'm still here. I have another opportunity, another day to live, another chance to contribute, another chance to make a difference in life. It is ridiculously impossible to become a human being. I am one. I have other good things going for me as a human being, and I'm just grateful. You, you're dwelling and looking at what you don't have versus looking at what you have. You are alive against stupendous odds. You are breathing air, observing sunsets, gazing into the night sky. Most people who could exist will never experience that. I need to constantly remind myself I'm not yet where I want to be. But I know I'll get there. I'm not where I want to be. But I am grateful. I am so grateful that I'm not where I used to be. I find ten things to be grateful for before my feet hit the ground. Mm. Ten things, and they can't cost money. And especially if I'm feeling strained and stressed, I go over my gratitude list because gratitude will reduce stress all day long. Happiness only requires that you're grateful. If you've got a billion dollars and three beautiful children that love you and a beautiful husband or wife, but it doesn't matter what you have if you're not grateful. If you live in an emotional home, habitual pace of worry or frustration, your life's called worry and frustration. Perspective. And once you see gratitude and opportunity, life is fun. You get to decide if you're gonna dwell and play prevent defense, or if you're gonna see opportunity and be grateful and go on offense. I am not where I wanna be, but I am so grateful. I am not where I used to be. If you didn't make me, you can't break me. If you didn't make the sun come up, you can't stop me. If you didn't make the moon shine at night, you can't stop me. My purpose, my will, my dedication, my motivation is all about doing the business because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm about. I'm about that business, I'm about that life. You have to stay grateful. You can't take things for granted. We have so much abundance in the world, so much opportunity, and too many people are crying about what they don't have instead of being so deeply grateful for what they have. Do all you can within your power and the power of others who love you to maximize what you can be, what you can think, what you, you can learn, how you can love, whatever it is. That's what you've got. Use it. Why do we hear about rock stars and famous actors and these people that we see as sort of like the, the absolute apex of success in the industry? Why are they all fucking killing themselves and dying of alcoholism and like all that darkness happening at the highest level? It's like, because that doesn't equal happiness. Like, what is happiness for you? Your mind, your emotions, your body. You have 100% control over what you do with these things. And that's where the game is won. You win the inner game, then you win the outer game. But a lot of people spent their life trying to win the outer game, they won and they're miserable. You look at your life as you look into the future and say, what fears am I holding on to? What fears that I'm allowing to imprison me that's keeping me from breaking out? that's keeping me from living up to my true potential, that's keeping me from really being happy, that's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life. What's, what's keeping me from controlling my destiny? What fears that I'm giving that permission to? Notice what I said, that we must give our permission to fear to immobilize us. Because whatever discomfort you experience, whatever challenges or difficulty that it is, you got to handle it. Got to go up in there and wrestle with it. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. See myself, See myself. confronting my fears, confronting my fears. 
handling my fears. I'm more than able. Where have you been up to this point? You look at your life, you look at what you produce. Is it giving you what you want? Are you living on purpose? Are you living your dream? Are you acting on your ideas? Are you doing all you can do? Have you gotten comfortable? Are you procrastinating? Are you evading your own greatness? Are you surrounding yourself with people that can nourish you? Are you challenging yourself? Are you experimenting? Are you learning something different? Is your life an adventure or is it boring? Where have you been? When you're pursuing your greatness, you live from a place of the willingness to live life courageously, to be willing to take chances, to become a risk taker, to make impact, to go beyond believing, to knowing, to lean not into your own understanding, to feel within yourself. There's some cause, there's something that's bigger than me, but I'm never alone in facing this. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Life will whoop your butt so bad you will be so miserable, you will catch so much hell, you say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. You've got some idea, some dream that you might have to go back and brush it off and look at it again and say, I've got to do this. This is my stuff. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is why I showed up. Where are you going with your life? What decisions are you making right now as you look into the future? It's necessary that you get outside of your comfort zone. It's necessary that you develop some new relationships where you can learn from people. It's necessary that you do reading, that you do research. It's necessary if you're already involved in some business that you don't be satisfied with where you are. You want to make it today? It's necessary for you to constantly look at ways of getting better. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, and it's necessary for you to challenge yourself to go after it and get better and leverage relationships that can help you get to where you want to go. But it's you. The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution, is you. Good times create weak people. Weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create good times. My whole thing is leaders anticipate, losers react. If you can anticipate what's coming, you can really take advantage. If you wait till it hits you, you're in trouble. 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 The biggest problem people have is they think they're not supposed to have it. Problems are the fuel for growth. It's like, if you don't have any problems, you're either a liar or you might call them challenges. It feels better. I understand that. Anybody who doesn't have problems is either totally asleep at the wheel or they don't have much of any kind of a life. But then there's fulfillment. And fulfillment is living what you're made for. Is it a lack of confidence? No, it's a lack of mission. I like winning. I like being the best at what I do. So I'm not going to settle for less than that. Why would I? Michael Jordan making a thousand shots before you take a break. So you look at Jordan or you look at, you know, LeBron or you look at anybody who's the best in the world at what they do and you go, aren't they lucky? But if you actually study them, you'll see they're doing things, they're practicing in private things that make them certain in public and they get rewarded for what they do in public. Yeah. And you gotta do the same. When you just know you're gonna mess up, it's not gonna be perfect. You're gonna get forget that line that you really wanted to say, but just put all the energy on the audience, everything starts to change. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. It's a shift in your identity. Every single day, six days a week. What matters? A few subjects, your body, because your energy matters. That energy is low. Everything I just said is worthless to you. Because when you're low energy, you don't use your full intelligence or ability. You need emotion. 
if you don't know how to master your emotion, emotions start wars, emotion creates peace, emotion gets your children. Emotion is what can make that business work or fail. And most people don't know how to direct their own emotions. Let me be conscious about feeding my brain things that are gonna give me not only inspiration, but insight and skill and tools. 68% of the Fortune 1000 were started in either a recession or a depression. Well, the first skill you gotta to master to be great is the ability to recognize patterns. When humanity recognized the pattern of the seasons, the whole world changed. Because we went from hunter-gatherers trying to survive from place to place where we're exposed to everything, to wait a second, if we plant in the springtime, we protect in the summer, we reap in the fall, and then we hang on to some of that so we can live through the winter, that created communities for the first time, and then eventually cities and states and countries. So that changed the world. What will change a person's life is when you realize there's also a set of seasons in your own life. And so think of it this way, zero to 21 is springtime. Things are easy to grow in springtime. You don't have to do that much. Growing as a kid happens naturally, but overall life is supporting you. It's sending you, teaching you, sharing with you. Now, when you get from, you know, 21 to 41 or 22 to 42, whatever range you want to talk about, you now are in the real world. And now you go test what you learned in your springtime. So you start to learn, test, figure out what's real. And it's an important stage of life. 42, 43 to 62, 63 is the power of your life. If you worked hard in the spring and the summer and you put yourself out there and you planted, it's a reaping time. It's a time when you really become a leader. And then if you're lucky, you go from 63 to 83 and maybe 83 to 103 and you have an extended final season of your life where you get to be the mentor, you get to share. You get to make a difference and maybe towards the end of your life, people look out for you again after you looked out for everybody else. That's kind of the cycle of life. What if you're born in 1910? World War I ends, the world looks like it's a great place, new technology, cars, radio, and then what happens? An explosion of abundance, the roaring 20s, and so you're a kid, you're 14, 15 years old, and you're like, I can't wait to get a car to go. But what happened when that person hit the next stage of life at 19, 20, 21 years old? As they came of age, it's 1929. And suddenly, people are jumping out of buildings, total depression, dust bowl, nobody's got jobs. It looks horrific and it was horrific. But then did they get a break? No, when they turned 29, it's 1939. It looked like the whole world was gonna end. Hitler was sweeping across Europe, bombing London. It literally looked like the world as we know it was over. This is what gives me great optimism for everyone watching here. Winter's not forever. No pandemic lives forever. Everything changes and everything ends. And the good news about winter is it's always followed by springtime. What follows the night? The daytime. What a cool way to set it up if you were God or the universe. The first thing I do every single morning is I go and freeze in cold water. And when you jump in, it never feels good to go in, but getting out, you feel incredible. But I, I do it for a different reason. I do it to train my brain to say, when I say now, it means now. When I say go, we go. I don't stand there because it's cold and go maybe in a minute when I'm ready. But I always do it because I've trained my brain. This is how we work. And if you train your brain to do that every single day, then it'll do it on the more difficult and important things in life. But the essence of it is, I change my body radically and I do three things to make sure that my brain is primed. And what I mean by primed is, most people think their thoughts are their thoughts, Lewis, and you and I know better. Most people just don't understand that you are being primed all the time and unless you prime yourself, you're gonna be primed by the environment. So I wanna take control of my brain. So I do three quick things. One, I take three minutes of those 10 minutes 
after I've changed my body and I focus on three different events in my life that I'm grateful for. I usually pick two big ones and one small one. It could be as simple as a smile on my daughter's face and it changes your biochemistry. Then real fast, I do this three minute process. It's kind of like a blessing. And then three minutes, the last three minutes are called three to thrive, where I focus on three things I want to accomplish. But instead of thinking I want to accomplish, I see, feel and experience it is done. I feel grateful, I celebrate it. And it trains your brain. So in 10 minutes, I'm done. Third thing that I'll do, I immediately send a message or a text or an audio message to somebody as a sincere compliment. And I don't go, dude, great job, or wow, you're cool. I say, hey, listen, I saw you on Tuesday with those kids, and I saw you take that extra 20 minutes, no one else did. And I just want you to know, I saw that, I thought that was incredible. So I'm always very specific, mm. so they know it's not just some positive thinking bullshit call, it's sincerely doing it. It makes me constantly look for the good in the people I work with. Fourth thing I do is whatever I don't want to do, the most challenging part of the day. What's the story we all love? It's the comeback story. It's the comeback, it's the Rocky, it's that music where all of a sudden you step back up and you take control and rock. Good times create weak people. Weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create good times. The fact that you're still alive and still on this earth, even though it's been challenging and rough, and sometimes you get discouraged and uninspired to keep going, God has a plan. You will grow through what you go through. Don't be sad, be grateful. Don't dwell, do. Don't complain, create. We got this. As long as there's breath in my lungs, there's hope in our hearts, and giving up's not an option. You and I and we, no matter what your unique situation, your storm, your struggle, your trauma, your abuse, your wounds, your scars, no matter what they are, you are not a product of your past, you are not a product of your environment or your current unique situation, but you are always a product of how do we navigate through our storm. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you. And it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. That dream is not going to wait to say take a breather. It's going to say come catch me. Catch me if you can! You gotta block out all of the noise around you that's gonna tell you you can't do it. Just believe that you can. Tell yourself I am more than my circumstances. I am more than my demons. I am great and I will give my gift to the world because this is what I was born to do. Go get it, son. Go get it. Be sweet. 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 Go get it, son. If you're going to see it, if you're going to see breakthrough, then you are going to have to be okay with the process that is required. The one thing you need to do to go where you've never gone before, to have what you've never had before, is to change the way you think. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's gonna be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Believe that you can. Believe it's possible for you to have it. Don't lay on your back. Anything that comes your way, you got to be prepared to accept the challenge and go through it. And stop thinking about the negative. Stop talking about the negative. Ask yourself, what would amazing look like for you? As long as that heart is pumping blood, you're not dead yet. They haven't put rose petals on your box yet. Make sure every breath you take counts for something. Continue to pursue purpose. And we all got a purpose. Every one of you in this room were born to not just exist, but to experience life. Every one of you in this room, you were born to leave your fingerprints on history. 
If you're struggling, if you're frustrated with yourself, if you're at that point where you're so sick of yourself and your excuses, I've been there, Steven's been there. This is a normal part of the human experience. And at some point, either the pain is going to get big enough or you're going to bump into somebody's story somewhere on this planet who has been in the position that you're in right now, facing the stuff that you're facing right now, and there is something about their story at this exact moment in time that will ignite something in you that is missing, and what is missing in you right now is hope. Because when you're stuck and when you are on a downward spiral, whether it's just in your own head or it's in self-destructive behavior, the thing that's missing in your life is hope. You don't believe right now that anything is gonna make a difference. What if this is the time sobriety sticks? What if I go to therapy and I actually do change the way that I think? What if I could recover from this narcissistic abuse that I've you know, been kind of struggling with after that relationship or that marriage? What if I could get out of debt? If that person did it, maybe I could do it. And without either hope or that kind of rock bottom moment, I don't think you're gonna change. Scratch is what makes you better. Scratch friction. Obstacles create growth. There's no friction when you're this far up in the game anymore. You think there right. is. The real, achieve, that's yeah. right. When you achieve so much, the friction is, is, is minor. Because why? I'm sore. I'm going to get a massage today. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat today. The refrigerator is always full. So your comforts are now, so your discomfort is now very minuscule to your discomfort back here in the $7 a month place. So you have to go back to the total discomfort to then raise your level of where you're at now. Mm. I'm not saying stay there and stay there. Visit. Visit it. And then you raise your level. You, you begin to realize that your dream and your gifts have so much meaning and so much value for you till your hunger for them will begin to push you past the fear. Your hunger to have them will give you a special drive. As you work on yourself, as you begin to acknowledge your true identity, the true power that you have, the true capacity you have to bring about change, the miracle working power that you have within yourself to do the things that you want to do. And once we learn to make choices that measurably pay us back, give us more residuals for longer term, for longer time in life, we start to fall into that wise place of being able to navigate the art of living where life becomes a little bit more of a dance. You're sitting on the edge of the bed trying to have an honest dialogue with yourself and the little voice says, you know, it's pretty disgusting in here. And you think, well, I'm way above such trivial niceties as organizing my room. It's like, well, that's pride. That's arrogance. If you're above organizing what's actually yours, how in the world are you ever going to organize anything else? And so you get on your knees and you think, well, it's time to, you know, take a brush to the toilet. And maybe that's where you start. And so, and that works, like that works. You start making those micro improvements, like real micro improvements, real on the ground, actual micro improvements to things you know that are wrong, you'll improve unbelievably rapidly. If you don't have hope and you don't have this breakthrough where you have for just a millisecond, this insight where you go, well, what if things didn't work out? If you don't have that moment, most people stay so stuck in resignation. There are um, so many people that are not aware of how much better and how much more present and how much more joy they could experience in their life. See, when you are not 
filling your life with the things that you are capable of doing. See, we all have some stuff that we've been given. And I don't think that it's optional for us to sit on what we have. See, if you're sitting on what you have, what you've been given, I think everybody's been given something to bring to the planet, that only you can do that, only you can perform that, only you can initiate that activity. And if you don't do that, if you're not filling in your life with your life work or your mission, then there are gaps in your life. And what we do when we're not living out our true identity, we begin to fill the gaps, we fill the holes with garbage. Success is getting what you want. Fulfillment is living what you're made for. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. Can you train your brain to appreciate? Because in the middle of whatever you're pissed off about or frustrated or fearful about or worried about, you're deleting all the things you can be grateful for, you can appreciate that are absolutely real. Be your own motivator and you build yourself up. And that's the problem with the mind. You know, I want your listeners or viewers to really think about this. You do not experience life. You experience the life you focus on. That's it. In order to achieve greatness, you must first believe you can. What's the biggest challenge that most of these individuals have? What's the common challenge? Believe. That they don't believe, man. You know, it's, it's, um, it's all mental and people don't get it. You know, everybody wants to say, okay, well, here go 10 steps to, okay, Lewis said do eight, ET said do nine. Mm -hmm. You know, this person says this is 12 steps and everybody's trying to get the steps without the mentality. You got this. I believe in you. When somebody says, no matter what happens, whether it succeeds or fails, I'm going to be by your side. Oh, that's, that's when I have the confidence to do difficult things. Wow. So it's the people in my life. You should recognize the potential in yourself and love yourself enough to make the changes that produce the best possible version of yourself. Or how do you overcome self-doubt? How do you overcome self-doubt? Help someone else overcome self-doubt. I love that. I love that. You overcome self-doubt by helping. Like, and it's not a selfish thing. I'm only helping you so I can. You have to genuinely love and commit to the person. So it's not the car, the house, the whatever. It is that internal goal, that internal why. And so for me, I just think that's it. Like that, like you, ah, it's just, mm. it's something within and you mm. got to pull it out. And so it's easy when you have a why, a purpose. I'm doing it for this. I'm doing it for that. It's easy to get up and get going. But if it's just for a car, what happens when you get the car? Because you can buy it. What happens when you get the house and you can buy the house? The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you. You have got to stand up to that voice. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on what you're doing, on the goal that you want to reach. You've got to sell yourself every day every day every day according to your level of belief it will manifest itself in what you're doing whatever we have right now whatever we're demonstrating in our lives is a result of what we believe subconsciously that we deserve and part of increasing that belief level is that you have got to convince yourself every day I believe I'm the best there is. I ain't apologizing for it to anybody. I, th I think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. If you can't do it, you scratch, claw, and even die trying.